Hey, shalom, most high in Christ, bless, Officer Samakaya. Hey, shalom, shalom, most high in Christ, bless, Officer Judah. Hey, shalom, shalom, most high in Christ, bless you, Officer Yokanan. So we preparing for the uh, the feast, the Day of Atonement. So with uh, coming upon the Day of Atonement, we're gonna go into a quick class, uh, reasoning with the wise. Let's start in Proverbs chapter twenty and verse eighteen. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 20 and verse 18. Every purpose is established by counsel, and with good advice, make war. So the scriptures, the Bible instructs us, it says, every purpose is established by counsel. So every move we make, every decision we make, whether it's in your, whether it's in your personal life, it got to do with the body, you're making a job, a job move, it says, every purpose is established by counsel. As we are... Coming together as one nation, we have to make moves with counsel. Not not the counsel from your mother, not the counsel from your father, your brother, whoever you looked up to before you came into the truth. You have to your 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 actions have to be preceded by counsel. Counsel with your leadership. You must get counsel. So every purpose is established by counsel, and with good advice, make war. With good advice, make war. Go to 24 and 6. I want you to keep in mind that that word war, because it said, with good advice, make war. A lot of times we just think of war as you going and getting getting some guns, going over, going and shoot uh, with an army and going to do something. That's not the war we in. We'll read that in 24 and 6. The book of Proverbs, chapter 24 and verse 6. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in multitude of counselors there is safety. So it says, "For by wise counsel thou shalt, shalt wait, wait, for by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war." So when we make moves, the moves we make, the decisions we make, even if even something as um, small as a job change or a, a you going to, you you about to make a move, moving into a house, moving into an apartment, that's a that's a that's a um, that's a matter of war because you can you can. Get a job. You could take a job offer, and it mess you. It mess up. It may take you completely away from being able to build up your spirit. It drains you completely, and you 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 you, you could be stuck at a job where you're not able to study because you're working 14, 15, 16 hours a day, where you don't really have time. Every time you do sit down to try to read, you fall asleep. That's war. That's a war on your spirit. So you when you make decisions, you have to make sure you get counsel. You have to make sure even even upon you getting counsel, you got to do your own research, too. We're going to go on a little bit more into that as well further. But you have to make sure that when you make decisions that you think about how it's going to affect you spiritually, not 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 just how it's going to make your bank account bigger. You got to think about how it's going to make you affect you spiritually when you get a job, uh, moving into an apartment, moving into a house. You got to think about those things. You don't want to move into a house and you're in the middle of a, a, a war zone, a gang war zone, and now you had your, your life is at stake. You're going to be spiritually disturbed because you're in a community where you always, every time you look up, every time you wake up, it's gunshots, this, that, and the third. So every decision that you make, it's a decision of war, whether you, whether, whether you think it or not, because we are in a spiritual war. Um, and in the multitude, and it says, in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. You may not. Let's say you have. Let's say you have a counselor of a thousand. Your counselor of a thousand might not be a financial advisor. You might have to know. You might have to know somebody. Okay, I know that he's he's good with finances. You know what? I need to make some financial decisions. Let me go and ask him about this. Let me go and ask her about that. You gotta know who you're counseling with, because. Every a counselor may not have the knowledge of every every single iota of thing. He may not he may not know about real estate. So it's either you ask him and he direct you to the right person, or you ask you ask those that you know has that real estate background, or whatever background and whatever area of expertise you're looking to make a move in. Uh, from there, go to Second Corinthians because we because said make keep in mind that word war. Uh, we just read here, for by wise counsel, thou shalt make thy war. Second Corinthians 10 and 3. The book of Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. 
For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So we walk in the flesh, but we're not warring in the flesh. And, and of course, we know we this is ultimately going into us keeping the commandments. But remember, in Jeremiah, it says, build ye houses and live in them. To build a house, you got to have a job. To build a house, in some cases, in this, in this you either had to have money or you got to have good credit. So, in this, and what we're doing, you got you to have the right resources to make certain moves. Whether it's a job, if you're going to, if you're going to start trying to start proving a sister or proving a brother, you got to have the right resources. But that war, is, you got to, your, your spirit got to be right. You got to make a spiritually sound decision where if you get a job, it ain't going to take you away from not only you studying and um, studying, reading your four chapters, things like that, but also you can't get a job that's going to stop you from doing the work, putting your brick in, where you never, where you never available to do anything because you always got to work. You work Sunday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 10 o'clock at night, so you're never available to do anything. That's not good for your spirit. Read that. Read that again. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Because and then we're dealing with in a matter of counsel. If you know you got to cover your spirit, and you looking at a job just because it make you make you gonna make a hundred k. You may not be looking. You in your mind, you might not be thinking about the fact that you to make that hundred k, you're gonna be making working 60, 70, 80 hours a week. So you're gonna always be burnt out, always not able to do nothing. So that's a part of that. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the putting down of strongholds. You gotta get counsel to make sure that you're not rolling in in a a, um, a covetous spirit. Because that'll be a stronghold in your mind. If you got a covetous spirit, you're not you're not thinking about you know what, this job, I'm making money. I'm going to be able to take care of my family. I'm going to be able to pay my bills. But, dang, I ain't going to be able to do, be able to do nothing. I ain't going to be available for nothing. You might not be thinking of that because you'll be making a decision off your co- of, of, based off of your covetousness. Read. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And then same, same thing just popped in my mind. Same thing with you want to prove a sister. You could just be straight 100% in your lust. And you go get counsel, at least like, nah, but nah, give it some time, give her some time. And you're like, nah, nah, I'm ready. We, we hear leadership talk about it all the time. Brothers, gung ho to do it and make a decision, and then you end up with a demon, you end up with a dragon. Because you didn't deal with the stronghold, that stronghold of lust in your mind. So you went and made an unwise decision. You, did, you went against counsel. Read. Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So we we always, as we move and make moves in this truth, we always have to have a mindset of okay, if I make this decision, is it gonna affect me? How is it gonna affect me spiritually? Is it gonna benefit me? Is it gonna free up some time so I can do do the work? Or is it gonna take up all my time and now I'm not able to, I'm not available to do nothing? Am I going to be so drained from work that it's going to take a toll on my spirit? You got to think about those things and the decisions. And I'm, I'm naming your job. I'm naming the proven lust. That you, it's, it's a wide range of things that we may do, and we may not even think that it may affect us spiritually until we end it, and then we in the fire, and then now we got to readjust and, and readjust and make different moves because we made a bad decision. So we always got to keep that in mind that the decisions that we make, the physical decisions that we make, we got to look at, okay, how is this going to affect me spiritually? Is it going to allow for me to continue being able to study? Is it going to allow for me to, of course, it's going to allow, it's going to call, it's going to put me in a position where I'm, I'm, I'm fighting between breaking God's commandments and, and going to this job or doing whatever it is. You got to think about those things. And that's why it's necessary for us to get counsel. Because sometimes we may sit down, we may research some things, but depending on your spirit, you might you might miss something. You might you might not you might do all your research, look all into it, but then you make a move without getting counsel, and the counselor may have asked a question that you didn't think about. 
So that's one that's one thing that we all that's why it's the type of class reasoning with the wise. You got to go with those that have some spiritual understanding, scriptural understanding, some experience, so that when you make your decision, they may have either went through it themselves, or they have they have already dealt with a matter, or in some cases they have sat under upper leadership that dealt with a matter with them present, and they gained experience on how to deal with it. So you don't make moves without getting counsel. We always got to remember that. Get uh, Exodus chapter 19, 18, Exodus 18 and 19. The book of Exodus chapter 18 and verse 19. Verse 19. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to Godward, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. And just to bring you up to speed, this is Moses' father-in-law giving him guidance on how to deal with the people. Because Moses was in a position, he was, the, he was the, the leader of the nation of Israel at the time, but he was doing everything himself. So this is the counsel that his father-in-law gave him. Read. Verse 20. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. So he's saying, he, he said, let me see. Can Did I miss again? it? Can we read again? Yeah. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk, uh -huh. and the work that they must do. Read on. I'm More, for this next verse. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. So what we all must have to, must understand that the various congregations that are set up throughout the world, they set up according to God's laws. We, we set up we set up Chicago, we set up Arkansas, we set up in St. Louis, Detroit, various places just like this to be able to handle the situations that's going on within the congregation, the small matters, because we've been taught. We've been taught by our leadership, and we've been given direction. We've been given that experience so that we can help guide the congregation, guide the people to make right the right decisions to benefit their spiritual understanding, to benefit their the, um, in this life, the physical, jobs, various things like that. But this all has been set up, and it's designed out of the most high. What we read, read on. And let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee. So the bigger matters, they said, bring unto Moses. So it may be things that, in, very, in various congregations, it may be things that may be, that may be above our strength. But we have leadership that we can go to and be like, hey, X, Y, Z is going on. This is what I believe should happen. But I want to make sure I get counsel and, and see what, what, the, what the right move is. And then, bam, get the right answer, get the right counsel, and then make that move. And that's where everything is established by counsel. Every, everything, uh, we're going to read it later, but before we make any decision, any move, Within the congregations, it's done by counsel. It's done by direction, by order, by structure. What we reading right here. Read. But <clears throat> every small matter they shall judge. Small, small matters. That's why. That's why we there. We have leadership set up in various congregations because they're small matters. Just imagine you got a thousand, thousands of people going to the bishops. That that don't make no sense. Thousands of people just going over over the, the 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 officers, the captains, and going straight to the bishops. That's a whole, that's a whole lot of people. That's thousands of, upon thousands of people. The same thing with Moses' father-in-law told Moses, "You gonna wear away. That will wear our leadership away." So it's that's it's a it's a purpose of us having various congregations across the across the world with men set up as stewards of the congregation, as supervisors of the congregation, to be able to handle those small matters. Read. <clears throat> so shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. And the, 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 the workload is spread abroad. 
free. It's still the, the orders and things like that. The council is still coming down from the top, but the workload is spread abroad, so it's not stre- all that stress on one person. Read. If thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, then shalt be then excuse me, thou shalt be able to endure, and all this people shall also go to their place in peace. So this is, it says if then thou shalt be able to endure. It makes it makes every it makes everything work well, and more work can get done. That's the purpose. It's, counsel is a very heavy thing in this or in Israel, and it's a very necessary thing because a lot of a lot of Israel come out of the world, and we have that mindset of um, what's the what's, what's the word what's the word I'm looking for? Um, can't nobody tell me nothing. Can't I'm nobody wrong. can tell me nothing. Uh, I'm grown. I'm I'm oh, I'm old enough to make this. I got I got I have experience. I ain't going to these young men for nothing. Very just various. Israel has a has a a a, 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 stigma. a, a stigma in their mind that they think that because of and we and we're not knocking nobody's experience. What may because there's certain areas where experience does experience, worldly experience does um Matter. is functional. To some capacity, and it's true. But when it comes to spiritual things, you have to humble down. Just gonna say it, say it plain like that. Go to uh, Sirach chapter thirty-eight and verse sixteen. Sirach chapter thirty-eight and sixteen. When coming in is true. We gotta understand that we can't do everything by ourselves. A lot of us grew up in households where we had to, uh, so to say, learn how to do everything ourselves because we felt like we didn't have no help. So we just had this life, this lifestyle mindset of, hey, I could, I could, I could handle it. I can handle it. I could do this. I got to figure this out on my own. No, that's not why we're here as a nation. That's why the scriptures say, gather yourselves together. We got to gather together so that we can actually build together and actually make moves and be make wise moves, wise decisions. Uh, read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 37 and verse 16. Let reason go before every enterprise. So it says, let reason go before every enterprise. Pull up that definition of reason real quick. Let reason go before every enterprise, for every endeavor. Can you blow that up for me? Be able to blow it up, blow it up some more. Go to the uh, verb. Should be the second definition. Further, further down. Okay, this is reason out of Webster Dictionary. Verb. To use the faculty of reason so as to arrive to a conclusion. So it says to use the faculty of reason so as to arrive at conclusions. That's you're using using your brain, meaning, let's say let's say you do have to make a um. We're gonna read that second one too, so we're gonna go back if y'all um takes it off the screen. Use the faculty of reason so as to arrive at conclusion. That means if 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 you have it in your if you as a thought come in your mind that you think okay I gotta I gotta change jobs, or you know what I think it's time for me you know see my family growing, I got I'm in a one bedroom apartment, and I got three children. You know what? It's, it's time for me to, it's time for me to move, move out. You got to do some level of research. You got to look and see, see what the, the 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 market look like as far as cost. See what areas are good. You got to do some level of research yourself prior to going to get counsel. Because when you go and get counsel, you're gonna you're gonna get asked questions. You're going to get asked questions. You're going to be presented various things, but you have to do some level of research so you have some frame of knowledge about the endeavor that you're about to take, whether it's a job change, whether um, you're moving into a house. Um, hell, even if you, 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 you've been, you ready to prove and you, 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 see, you see a sister, you've been watching the sister putting in work in the body, and you, you want to you wanna start proving it. But you have to do some level of research yourself prior to you coming. That's what said, let reason go before every enterprise. Um, that's to use the faculty of reason so as to arrive to conclusion. Read that second definition. <laughs> it says, to walk, to talk, to talk with another 
so as to influence actions or opinions. So it's to talk with another. So it's two definitions. To talk with another so as to influence actions or opinions. So the first definition we read, use the faculty of reason so as to arrive at conclusions. So you make some level of, of, of attempt on your own to become knowledgeable about whatever decision it is you're going to make. Then you go and get counsel to present the things that you've already looked into, the pros, the cons, you, the research that you've done, and then your counselor can either affirm the things like, okay, based on whatever you got, whatever, based on, based on your circumstances, what you got here, this might be the best option for you. Or it may be, nah, that's not a good move. I've been, I, I've, I've experienced that before, or I've dealt with a I dealt with a brother or sister about a couple years ago, and they they did the same thing, and it didn't turn out good. So no, nah, don't do that. And in that aspect, you have to be willing. After your research, you got to be willing to accept that counsel of no, nah, that's not a good idea. You can't get you can't be so strong minded that because you did all this research, and you go get counsel and the counselor got experience in it and they know it's not going to turn out good, you can't be so strong-minded to, to, to be, I'm going to do it anyway. Because if, if you come into it, if you come to a counselor with that mindset, it's, you better off not even coming to the counselor. Because you already got your mindset on what you're going to do. It should be more so, hey, this is what I'm about to do. Not, hey, what you think about this? That's, that's, that's a difference. Um, read that again, Sirach 38. Sirach chapter 37 and verse 16. 37, I'm sorry. Let reason go before every enterprise and counsel before every action. So let reason go before. So before you make a move, do some research. Check into it yourself. And then once you check into your touch yourself, you be you gain that understanding, go and get counsel before you make the move. Go and get counsel before you make the move. Um, go to Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14 and verse 18. And we have many, many examples of that throughout the scriptures. We're gonna go here in Luke 14. 18 or 28. Uh, 28. The book of Luke, chapter 14 and verse 28. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? So in this case, let's say you 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 looking to buy some land, and uh, you looking to buy some land and get a house built. You got to look into it. Okay, do I make enough to be able to sustain this land and sustain this house? Am I going to be available to tend to this land and tend to this house? Am I going? If, if my am I? If, if, if do I make enough money to be able to maintain this? Is my job secure? You got to think of all of those things. And if the and, and if the verdict is no, nah, you got to wait a couple of years. You got to get some things together. Then you got to wait. But if you do have sufficient to finish, then you okay. I can do this. Then you go and get that counsel. Read on. Lest happily after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it. All that behold it began to mock him. So in this case, meaning you didn't do your own research, you didn't really examine yourself, you really didn't think about things through, and then you went, to, you know what? Hey, that sounds good. I'm gonna go get this house. Then you go get it. And then you stay start building the foundation of the house, laying the foundation, and they then they hit you with the cost, the bill. You like, I can't pay that. It's too late now. Now you ashamed yourself. Read. Same. This man began to build and was not able to finish. Read. Or what king going to make war against another king set it not down first and consulted whether he be able with, with excuse me, and consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. So the same thing with, with war. You got to actually map out and examine, okay, do I need to... Well, we'll we translate this going into war. If you, gotta, if you battle a, 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 a covetous spirit, don't put yourself in a position where, you, where you're going to, um, where you have the opportunity to, to feed that covetous spirit. Where you're in, you in a situation where 
you take a job where you're getting all this money. Now you're feeding that covet your spirit. Now you got all these, you in the truth, but you got all these, you got a, a, a four five, you got a Lamborghini, a, a Porsche, all these two seater cars, collecting cars. You got, uh, you, you're doing all of these things being covetous because you took a, took a job where you're making all this money, but you didn't examine, you didn't deal with the fact that you got a covetous spirit. Read. Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an, an, an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. So this, we, this is a parable that, the, that Christ was giving the disciples that, hey, you pretty much got to give up everything and follow me. Not be a bum and follow him. But you have to put the put the most high first and his commandments put them first as you make moves your 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 decision making as we uh as we are repenting and and learning how to walk in these commandments we got to make sure we're making decisions that's going to that's going to set up to set us up to be successful spiritually set us up to be successful in keeping the commandments set us up to be successful in studying and reading Doing the work of the Lord. We got to, that's, that's our vocation. That's what we've been called to. We can't let nothing or any, can't let, let nothing interfere with our spiritual growth or let nothing interfere with the ministry. Yes, we got to work, but we don't, we, we shouldn't be working to where it's hindering us being able to do God's work, to do what he called us to do. Our job is to go wake up the 12 tribes of Israel so we can get up out of here. We can't get consumed. That's in Sirach 38. We can't get consumed with work, 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 that we're not able, that we're not actually putting forth our bricks and effort to build the kingdom of God. Uh, yeah, let me get a script. Uh, Sirach chapter 38 and verse 33. Going back to what the officer was bringing out. So when when you're getting counsel, right, and just is just going off the example that he's given based on work. You want to make sure you don't want to put yourself in a position to where you're you're so busy and you're so involved in your work. You can't do what you're called to do for the most high God and raising the nation of Israel. Neither would you be able to be in a put yourself in a position to be in a place to continue to get good counsel and be amongst men or be amongst the men of the wise. Right. Watch this. Sirach chapter 38, verse 33. Sirach chapter 38 and verse 33. They should not be sought for in public council, uh -huh. nor sitting high, high in the congregation. So men that are busy in their work, they're not going to be sought for in council, nor are, gonna, nor are they going to have a good reputation of men in the, uh, pretty much in the congregation, right? Read on. They should not sit on the judge's seat, uh -huh. nor understand the sentence of judgment. Nor understand counsel. Read on. They cannot declare justice and judgment. Uh-huh. And they shall not be found where parables are spoken. Why? Because they're so busy with their work and they found they put themselves in a position where they're always occupied in something else versus being occupied in their own spiritual growth. Read on. But they will maintain the state of the world. All you're going to be doing is working, 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 maintaining the state of Esau's wicked world. All right. Read on. And all their desire is in the work of their crime. You see that? That's what all your time is going to go to. That's what all your occupation is going to go to. All your desire and all you want to do is to get work or to continue working. That way you can feed your covetousness or you feed the other desires that you have that's outside of God. All right? That's it. And that's, that's a very, very heavy point. Because we, we all got to be mindful. We got to know our spirits. And that's why I say let reason go before every enterprise. You got to know, you got to examine yourself and be like, okay, is this, is this going to be good for me? This is going to be good for my spirit. You got to think about things like, uh, let's read that real quick. So we stay with it. It's 37 and 16 again. So right, 37 and 16. The book of Sirach, chapter 37 and verse 16. Let reason Go before every enterprise and counsel before every action. And I'm just, I'm just going to use this as an example. Never been to this place in my life, but I know the, the, the history of the place. Let's say you got, you got management experience. You got management experience, various jobs, uh, and you have a, a job offer that's, let's say you management experience, you're making 60000 a year. 
you get a job offer for a hundred thousand a year. You have a you have your brother that have a a very heavy lustful lustful spirit. You get that that hundred thousand job offer for management position. Let's say it's a regional manager or something like that. Is at Hooters. <laughs> That's not a wise decision because you're getting paid better. You're gonna put yourself in 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 you're gonna put yourself. And this is an extreme example, but you put yourself in a position where now you at working at a spot that women are come to work dressed provocatively and you gotta manage you gotta be the manager of that I ain't gonna say regional but the regional manager tramp right uh they travel, travel. so you the you're region. the manager of a certain store. Right. And you gotta be there and see that every day. That's not a wise move. That's why I said let reason go before every enterprise and counsel before every action. Because you you have you have to consider you like, you know what? That's a that that I okay, that'll put me in a better position to provide for my family, but Nah, I c I can't do that. That's gonna mess my spirit up. That's gonna that's gonna mess around and have me back in the world doing things I I shouldn't be doing. You know what? I'm gonna pass on that job. That wouldn't be wise. Or you're gonna think about it and you're gonna actually if you're having a battle in your mind about it, you're gonna go and get counsel. You're gonna go and speak to your leadership like, hey, I just got this I work at XYZ and I'm making I'm making sixty thousand right now. I just got a job offer for a hundred thousand a year at Hooters. And we, we, I mean, you can guarantee we're going to say, nah, bro, you need to keep it pushing, whether you battle a lustful spirit or not. It's like, nah, bro, you, you keep it pushing. But just using an example like that, you have to get counsel before you make moves. Because it may be something that you might not, it might, that's an extreme example. It might be something small that you might not have thought about that when you bring it before your counselor, your counselor asks you and say, hey, what did you think about this? Or did you think about that? And you're like, you know what? I didn't even think about that. You know what? That might not work for me. Let me let me rethink about it. Let me re redo the pros and cons. So that's why it's very important to always get counsel. Go to uh Sirach 8 and 17. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 8 and verse 17. Consult not with a fool, for he cannot keep counsel. So consult not with a fool, for he cannot keep counsel. Of course, a fool is somebody that has no regard, don't, don't know nothing about God's commandments. They don't care about God's commandments. But also, it says, consult not with a fool, for he cannot keep counsel. If you just came through the doors three months ago, don't go try to get counsel from somebody that came in three months ago right with you. Mm -hmm. Or six months. Or seven months. There's nothing that they can teach you. There's nothing that they can tell you because they, they still tripping and stumbling and fumbling over keeping the commandments. They don't have no experience to be able to actually give you uh, wise counsel. Or don't, don't go just because they just because they older in age. You know what? I'm going to go and counsel with them. Or because they your parents. They, 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 may, they may be your parents and they may have some experience with holding a job for 30 years. But they don't have no, they're not going to be able to guide you spiritually because they knew they knew to keep in the commandments. They don't have any experience on dividing, okay, is this going to pull me away from keeping the commandments? Or is this going to pull me away from studying? So you have to get counsel from those that have been doing it, those, the leadership, those that have experience. I'm going to pull a script to prove that. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4 and verse 8. Just to um, back up what the officer is saying, a lot of times we think carnally, right, especially coming out the world. And, again, it's not to knock that aged men um, by the number of years have some level of experience, right, or have some wisdom in certain areas of life or aspects of life, of course. But when it comes to spiritual growth or when it comes to wisdom and how to navigate through this world in the in the space of pleasing God and actually committing your works unto God, every action that you have unto God and making sure that you're in his favor, you have to go with men that has experience in dealing with the Bible and the commandments of God. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 8. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 8. 
For honorable age is not that which standeth in years of time. You see that? The, the length Lord, of time. The, the Lord says that honorable age is not that which standeth in the length of time. Right? So it doesn't matter whether you 40, 44, 45, 50, 60 years old. All right? Just because you have age of years, that doesn't make you an honorable man. So it says, for honorable age is not that which standeth in length of time, nor that is measured by the number of years. Right? Because that's usually what we go off. Oh, man, this brother, he's 45 years old. Surely he knows something. And of course, yeah, he may do. But what is the Lord talking about? Verse 9. Verse 9, but wisdom is the gray hair unto men, and an unspotted life is old age. You see that? It says wisdom is the gray hair unto man, and an unspotted life or righteousness, the practice of righteousness, right, is the life of an old age. Meaning what? When you're practicing God's commandments, that is your experience. God's commandments and his wisdom is experience. One more scripture. Uh. Officer, so Sirach chapter 1, verse 7, just to prove that. Sirach 1 and 7. The book of Sirach chapter 1 and verse 7. Unto whom hath the knowledge of wisdom been made manifest? Uh huh. And who hath understood the, her great experience? You see that? The knowledge of wisdom or the knowledge of God and his commandments is experience. That's why when you practice it, you get an unspotted life into it, unto you, it will become your old age. All right, that's it. And then just with that, don't, don't, don't be fooled and think. Don't, don't let no, I'm going to say, like, don't let nobody tell you, um, hey, don't go counsel with those young men. Don't go counsel with them. Because what you, what you must realize is that we didn't sit ourselves up here. The very across the across the world, Israelites and the, the Most High set up the order. The Most High put people put, put put men in place. And when you when you reject who God set in place, you're actually rejecting the Most High God. Right. You so you're doing yourself a disservice if you have that mindset. Right. Uh, but moving on, um, go back to Sirach eight, Sirach eight and eighteen. The book of Sirach, chapter 8 and verse 18. Do no secret thing before a stranger, for thou knowest not what he will bring forth. So it says, go further, it says, do not do no, read 17 and 18 together. Verse 17, consult not with a fool, for he cannot keep counsel. Uh -huh. Do no secret thing before a stranger, for thou knowest not what he will bring forth. So you come in, you come in, you three months in, and somebody else came in, they six months in. You go in a council with them, that's, that's a secret thing. You bring in a secret thing before a stranger. You don't know what they're doing. You don't know if they actually here to actually build and keep God's commandments because they don't have no experience. They have, that's just like, that's like you going to a six-month-old baby that can't even, that could barely crawl or walk and asking them for counsel, asking them how, how to go get a job, how to, how to interview. That's what, that's, that's what it is. That's what, it, that's what that's like. So you really, you have to, you have to counsel with somebody that got some sense, that got some experience. Right. Read. Open <clears throat> not thine heart to every man, lest he requit thee with a shrewd turn. To open not thine heart to every man. You open up your, your business, your personal business, what's going on with you to every man, you bound to have your business across the whole nation, across, the, across Facebook and Twitter and uh, Instagram. You bound to have your business just out there in the streets. And all because you was trying to get a solution, but you was trying to get it from the wrong person. Or you wasn't trying to get a solution. You was just trying to vent. You wasn't trying to build your spirit up. So we got to keep those things in mind. Go to uh, Sirach chapter 32 and verse 18. The book of Sirach chapter 32 and verse 18. A man of counsel will be considerate. But a strange and proud man is not daunted with fear, even when, when of himself he have done without counsel. So a man of counsel is going to be considerate, meaning that he's going to think. When you come to him with something, he's going to think about it. He's going to carefully consider before he give answer to make sure he guides you in, a in the right direction. He's going to actually have a care for you actually being successful in whatever endeavor it is that you're going to take. 
He's going to actually, he's going to ask questions <clears throat> to get a thorough understanding of what you're actually bringing forth. And if he don't know, mm-hmm. if he can't give a proper answer, he's either going to say, hey, I know, I know officer mm-hmm. such and such has experience with that. Hey, go speak to him about that. Or he's going to say, I'm going to get back with you. I'm going to go speak with the leadership. I'm going to go speak with X, Y, Z. I'm going to go speak with somebody and see what, see what the best line of action for you to do. And then I'm going to come back and let you know. That's what a, that's what a man, a counselor, is going to do because they consider it. They don't want to see you fall. They don't want to see you fail at whatever it is that you're trying to do. Uh, read on. Do nothing. Wait. Do nothing. You read 18 already, right? Yes, sir. Uh, go to uh, Sirach 37. Sirach 37 and 7. So we always got to keep that in mind. But it said, wait, read 18 again. I'm sorry. Read 18 again. 32 and 18. Sirach chapter 32 and verse 18. A man of counsel will be considerate. He, meaning he's going to consider before he give answer. He's going to consider that he's giving you the proper guidance and the proper counsel. Read. But a strange and proud man is not daunted with fear, even when of himself he have done without counsel. Meaning he don't care what he don't care about what you bring into him. He don't care whether you succeed or whether you fail. He's going to tell you anything to get you up out of his face. Go to uh, Sirach 37 and 7. And you know what that also showing? Go ahead. That he don't get no counsel himself. Exactly. That's yep. what he's saying. That's the last part. This brother saying he gets no counsel himself. So when you come to him and you ask for counsel, guess what? He ain't giving you no good counsel. Because right. he ain't give a damn just like he don't give a damn about his own life. Right. Says Sirach 37. Yeah, 37 and 7. The book of, 30, the book of Sirach, chapter 37 and verse 7. Every counselor extolleth counsel, but there is some that counseleth for himself. So this is what you, and, and, and when you are getting counsel, this is, this is what you have to keep in mind. Every counselor extols counsel, meaning that he speaks highly of counsel. A, a, good, a counselor is going to always tell you, hey, man, make sure you get counsel before you make a, make sure you get counsel before you pull that trigger. He's going to speak highly of counsel because he knows, he understands that getting counsel can save your life. You can actually save your life and save yourself from heartache. Um, read. Beware of a counselor. Wait, read that last part. It says. Yes. Be, every counselor extolleth counsel, but there is some that counseleth for himself. So some that counseleth for himself, meaning that he don't know, he don't know what you should do, but he's going to tell you something just to, just to sound deep. He's going he gonna to tell, tell you something. Is the sound deep and then in verse uh verse eight is gonna say what I'm about to say, but he gonna give you counsel to cause he don't know he gonna give you an answer and then sit sit on the side like man I wonder if it's gonna work, or he's gonna counsel so that it benefit him. Read verse eight. Beware of a counselor and know before what need he hath, for he will counsel for himself, lest. He cast a lot upon thee. And that's what you would get. You counsel with somebody that has no experience. Somebody that came in just you you supposed to counsel up. Not counsel up to the person that came in three months mm-hmm. before you, because they don't have no experience. They still a baby just like you. So you have to counsel up. You gotta go to the leadership. You have to go to your leadership and get the counsel that you need, get the direction that you need. Read. And say unto thee. Thy way is good, and afterward he stand on the other side to see what shall befall thee. Uh huh. Consult not with one that suspecteth thee, and hide thy counsel from such as envy thee. That's a, that's that's translate. That person that came in right with you could be envious of you. That person that came in right with you could suspect you of evil and die and give and tell you to do something so that you do fall. Or you, if you, if you. Let's say you were a soldier. You ain't going to counsel with no brother because that brother could be envious because you, you got promoted to a soldier and he didn't. So he'll tell, you, he'll tell you something to get you to get your rank stripped from you. Read. Consult not with one that suspecteth thee and hide thy counsel from such as envy thee. Uh-huh. Neither consult with a woman touching her of whom she is jealous. Read. Neither with a coward in matters of war, nor with a merchant concerning exchange. And you just as you read through these, you think about these things. You consider, if a woman consult 
It said, neither consult with a woman touching her of whom she is jealous. She going she gonna to give you bad counsel because she's jealous of that other woman. Mm. She, don't want it, she don't want that other woman to be in good spirits. Mm. And what you think about that? Oh, she nasty. She got a nasty attitude. Mm -hmm. She mean. She mean spirited. She going to speak evil because she's jealous of her. Mm -hmm. uh, and it says, neither with a coward in matters of war. Coward can't tell you how to go to war because he has no experience in it because he's too scared to go to war. Read. Nor with a merchant concerning exchange. Read. Nor with a buyer of selling, uh -huh. nor with an envious man of thankfulness, nor with an unmerciful man touching kindness. So, and so nor with the buyer of selling. You can't go to a, 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 a consumer and ask them, hey, how should I price this? How should I price this? Um, what? How should I price this wood? Oh, man, you should sell it for, for 25 cents. <laughs> They're going to tell you. They're going to tell you an answer so it benefits them, so it's cheaper for them, so it's easier for them to get it. Right. Uh, it says, neither with an envious man of thankfulness. An envious man is not thankful. He bitter. Mm -hmm. He's not thankful for nothing that he has, so he's not going to be able to give you any advice on being thankful. He's never content. Right. Read. Nor with an unmerciful man touching kindness. You can't, you can't, hey, how you show mercy? How you show mercy when a brother do X, Y, Z? He's not going to be able to give you guidance because he's unmerciful. Read. Nor with the slothful for any work. The slothful is not going to be able to show you how to get anything done. They're unproductive. Read. Nor with an hireling for a year of finishing work. Because they don't finish no work. Read. Nor with an idle servant of much business. Because he don't have no business to tend to of his own because he's idle. Read. Hearken not unto these in any matter of counsel. I think I'm jumping ahead. But be continually with a godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord, whose mind is according to thy mind, and will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. So that's going right back to that a man of counsel is going to be considerate. He's going to sorrow with you. He's, he's, his mind is according to your mind, meaning he wants you to be successful. He wants you to make a, a, a calculated decision that's going to lead you to a, a success in whatever endeavor you're taking. He said he's going to sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry, meaning if you go forward and do something and, and, and things, things may happen, things may go bad further down the line, he's going to sorrow with you. He's going he gonna to help get you back on your feet. He's going to actually care. That's, being, that's a, a considerate man. Um, read on. And let the counsel of thine own heart stand. This is a very, very important point. It says, let the counsel of thine own heart stand. Meaning, this, that, that, goes back, that goes with uh, what we read in verse 16 as well, where you got to, you have to, do some level of research to gain some knowledge in the decision that you're about to, that you thinking to make, that you potentially may make. And then it says, let the counsel of thine own heart stand. So once you got counsel, whether the, whether your counselor affirmed it or, or didn't agree with it, once you make a decision, you got to stick to it. You got to stick to that decision and ride it all the way out. And you got to remember, it's your decision. If your counselor, if you go to your counselor and your counselor say, yeah, that sounds good, this is good, this is good, this is good. Hey, hey, I think you should do it. When you go and say, I'm going to do it, you have to say, this is my decision. I'm doing it because it's my decision. Not you doing it because your counselor said, oh, well, such and such, Simakai said, do this. So now, if for, let's say, a year down the line, something goes south with it, something happened, the job, the, let's say it was a job, and the company shut down, and now you're like, man, this is Simakai's fault. No, you, you, you got counsel. You got advice. You made the decision. So when you get counsel, you got to understand that whatever is, whatever is discussed between you and the counselor, if you decide to go with what the counselor said, you have to understand that that's your decision. Same way as if you go against what the counselor said, it's your decision. It's your decision. Let the counsel of thine own heart stand. Read. And let the counsel of thine own heart stand. For there is no man more faithful unto thee than it. Uh-huh. For a man's mind is sometime wont to tell him more than seven watchmen. 
that sit above and in high tower. And it, it, it's heavy because a lot of times you will make a decision to do something, and then once you, you start looking to it, you start making a move, something bad happen, and then you get the thought, the thought come in your mind, like maybe maybe this ain't a good decision. Maybe I shouldn't do this because something bad happened. No, if you, you, once you make that decision, ride it all the way out. Spread a doubt. Yeah, that doubt come in your mind. You can't let that. You gotta. You can't waver in your decision. You gotta stick with your decision, whatever decision it is that you make. You gotta stick with it. Um, read. And above all this, pray to the Most High that He will direct thy way in truth. So you research. You research. Look into whatever it is. Get knowledgeable on yourself. Get counsel, and then before you make that decision, pray to the Most High. And it says, he will direct thy weight in truth. So once you make that decision, you got to stick with it. Go to uh, Sirach 32 and 19. Once you make that decision, you have to stick to it, and you have to own up to the decision that you made. The book of Sirach, chapter 32 and verse 19. Do nothing without advice, and when thou hast once done, repent not. Do nothing without advice, and when thou hast once done, Repent not. So when you make a decision, don't change your mind. Don't waver. Because a lot of them, like that part of, of, of you actually looking into whatever subject matter it is yourself and gaining some understanding before you go get counsel, that's very important because otherwise you're going to, uh, you're going to another man that may not know. Of course, we're going to ask questions to try to get a full picture of, of what's going on with you and how to, how you, and to guide you into making the right decision. But ultimately, if you ain't did no research, you ain't looked into the company, you ain't looked into how long the company been around, you ain't looked into nothing, and then you come to us, what you're doing is coming to us and, and you want us to make a decision for you versus you actually being a man or being, uh, being an adult and making a decision. Right. You want somebody else to make a decision for you. That's not, that's not what counsel is. That's not what advice is. It's, it's, our job is to help guide you in the, right, in the right way, not make decisions for you. So you have to understand. That's why, it's, that's why the scriptures say, uh, do nothing without advice. And when thou has once done, repent not. Not when your counselor has once done, when you has once done. You got something you want to bring up? No, sir. Okay. Well, that's, you got anything you want to bring up? Yeah, it's important what you're going over. Um, I want to touch on a basic scripture real quick. Give me Romans 15 and 4, and then I want to jump to Deuteronomy 32. It's important what you're touching on because we've been here before. We've been in these situations before. I'm speaking of us as a nation. We've been to a point where we've been given an ultimatum, right? Do A or do B. And if you do B, it might be bad for you or it will be bad for you. Go ahead and read. The book of Romans, chapter 15 and verse 4. Uh -huh. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning. So we want to go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32, right? We want to learn to um, to be better as a nation, right? We want to learn from our mistakes. One of our mistakes was we didn't heed counsel. The office is going over excellent precepts to put you in the spirit of, let me seek counsel. Let me not go on my own mind because if you read the scriptures, our forefathers did that already and it went bad for them. Go ahead and read 32 and verse 28. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, and verse 28. For they are a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. Speaking about us, speaking about the children of Israel, there's no understanding in us. Why? Because we don't heed counsel. Right? Read verse uh, 30, uh, 29, I'm sorry. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. They would consider where they would end up if they would not follow counsel. So my admonition to you is to consider what could happen if you choose to make a decision and go off of it without mm -hmm. heeding counsel. Do your due diligence, all right? Um, you're, you're not thinking about all the outcomes. That's why men of counsel are set up before you so that they can help guide you to help make the best decision possible instead <laughs> of you shooting yourself in the foot. All right, that's it. Hey, let me add one more one more scripture to that. So what would be the re repercussions of <clears throat> not following that counsel or not getting counsel or consider it, period? Let me get uh the book of Proverbs, chapter 5 and verse 12. The book of Proverbs, chapter 5 and verse 12. Why? Because Solomon spoke about that. 
about the person that is inconsiderate of counsel and a person that's always self-willed, right? Read that. Proverbs chapter 5 and verse 12. And say, how have I hated instruction? What will make a man hate instruction? Pride, the number of years of age, right? That's what will make a man hate instruction. All right, come on. And my heart despise reproof. And you despise correction. Why? Because you think you know it all. You think you got everything that you need already. All right, read on. And have not obeyed the voice of my teacher. You see that? And have not obeyed the voice of your teachers. The men that God have set up are your teachers regardless of age. Why? Because God have given them wisdom that is their experience. All of this entire Bible are instructions and ways that are found out of old. People have me, there are many people, thousands of men, wise men that have lived lives before us and have experienced all of our troubles and made bad decisions and made good decisions and those that depended on the Lord. Right? Read on. Nor incline my ear to them that instructed me. You see that? Nor have I inclined my ear to them that instructed me. Meaning what? This is a person that's rebellious, that's self-willed, and they don't consider a uh, counsel or the men that's been set up over them. Right? Read on. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. And that's what's going to happen to you when you move in a spirit of pride, when you move in a spirit of being inconsiderate of counsel. You will always, your name is always going to come up in something, okay? And you're going to be in almost all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly, all right? So you got to take heed to counsel and you got to exalt or extol counsel, all right? That's it. So with that, we say shalom. We pray that you were edified by what was brought out in today's class. Most high in Christ bless. Most high in Christ bless. Most high in Christ bless. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.